Hola a todos. Sprite sheets are also used to skin interactive elements in software and websites. So first we'll demonstrate how it works and then we'll discuss the many benefits that it provides at the end of the exercise. So this is my sprite sheet. It's called icons.png and all of my little icons and all of their different states are put onto that sprite sheet. Now what I've done is just enabled and made active two of those buttons. So you can see they go through all three states. There's the normal state, there's the over state or hover state, and then when they actually click down, there's the active state. And all you have to do is rig that up into an element to where all of that functionality takes place. And it's pretty simple using pure CSS. Okay, we'll begin with an empty HTML file that has a dark background set on it already. And I'll just start with button elements. Now it's important to keep in mind that you don't have to use button elements. You can use A elements, the anchor tag, if you want to make them link elements. Or you can use div elements and just make them behave as buttons. You can use any elements that you want. So this first button, I'm going to give an ID equal to RSSBTN. And since all of these little icon buttons are going to be part of a group, I'm going to put them into a class in the CSS we can just all assign them to a class of icons. All right, now here's the icons image file again. I also want to target the plus button. So I'm going to target the RSS button and the plus button and all of their states in my application. So the next one we'll just name plus button. So let's copy that line, go down one line and change RSS to plus. Now in our style element up top, let's target the icons class. That way we can affect all of the buttons that might be this, in this little icons group. You might have 10 of them. So you might not want to have so much CSS by targeting them each by their ID and giving them all the CSS properties in each ID rule. You can just put most of the properties in the icons rule and it will affect all of them. So the first thing we do is set the background property for the URL to the image path. Now if you were to look at this right now in your favorite browser, you'll see that you have two empty button elements because they haven't been given a width or a height yet. So I'm going to give these properties also to the icons class. Each one will be 50 pixels by 50 pixels. So they'll have 10 pixels margin space in between each other. The cursor will show the little hand symbol when the mouse goes over it. Outline none is there, so there's no outlines when the user selects or clicks on the button. And border, so we can't see a border around the, the button itself. We just want to see the background image that we set into place. So if we look at these right now, we should see both have the same starting image. Because by default, the background position property is 0 pixels, 0 pixels. Okay, now the reason why we see two gray RSS buttons when we look at the preview in the browser is because both of these buttons have the icons class and the icons class right now is simply setting this icons PNG sprite sheet as the background for each of the buttons. It's making the buttons each width 50 and height 50. So it only uses a single cell or a single frame inside of the sprite sheet. Now all we have to do is adjust the background position for each button by its ID. All of the uh, the background position by default is going to be 0 pixels, 0 pixels. 0 pixels X, 0 pixels Y. So you can actually go ahead and set that for the RSS button. Now for the plus button, you want to set a negative 100 pixels X and 0 pixels Y. And X is the horizontal plane. Y is the vertical plane. So you say negative 100 pixels on the horizontal plane and 0 pixels on the vertical plane. Now test this in your favorite browser. Now you can see that you've targeted the plus button simply by moving the background position negative 100 pixels. And by looking at our sprite sheet you can see that's what exactly what you needed to do. You needed to move from 0 pixels to 100 pixels in the horizontal plane. So you can see how that targets the plus because we moved from 0 pixels to minus 100 pixels on the horizontal plane. The x, 
the x-axis to target this plus graphic. That's why in the plus button we see the plus graphics and in the RSS button we see the RSS graphics because it's set to zero pixels on the x and zero pixels on the y axis. So you see there what you get? Now your job as the developer is to set up the hover state so when the user's mouse goes over one of those buttons you want to show the fully colored state of that button. So that means you have to move the background position down on the Y plane on the Y axis to access these graphics here. So what you can do is copy this line that says the rule for the RSS ID and then right under it you can just put the same one and put colon hover and this will allow you to access the hover state. Now whenever the user's mouse hovers you change CSS properties here. So for the RSS button the X plane or the X axis is going to remain zero pixels because we want to stay on the left edge of the sprite sheet but we want to move down minus 50 pixels so we go minus 50 pixels of the hover state on the Y axis. Now run that in your favorite browser and put your mouse over the RSS and you'll see that you have the hover state graphics coming into play now. All you have to do is the same thing for the plus symbol or the plus icon. So let's go ahead and grab the plus icons ID rule and after its ID let's put colon hover and for the X plane we're gonna or the X axis we're gonna leave it at minus 100 pixels. But we want to go down 50, so we go minus 50 pixels for the Y axis. So basically you can see how you're just sliding, or not really sliding, but you're moving, you're positioning the background sprite sheet, that, that whole sprite sheet, in these 50 by 50 pixel elements to where only portions of the sprite sheet show as background for the element. Now let's test this, and we should have working hover states for both buttons which we do. Now all we need is when the user clicks down make it go to the third state which is these on the bottom here. So we have to go down another 50 for the active state. So let's go ahead and put that into place. Let's take the RSS hover rule and just change hover to active and then we want to go down one more so this should just go to 100 we have to go down one more frame or one more cell on the Y axis okay so let's test this now when we click down we'll have the third state for that buttons graphics and you simply do the same thing for the plus button now this one should go down to 100 now you should have both of them fully working now if you want to make those buttons active you can just put an on click event so inside of your on click event is where you fire off some JavaScript to do whatever you want okay I'm gonna provide you guys with this icons.png sprite sheet now in the comment section for the last video that we put up yesterday somebody mentioned that I hadn't showed how to create the sprite sheets the graphics themselves or the sprite sheet grids and I'll show you what I do is I go into, I use Fireworks or Photoshop or Illustrator or any graphics editor that I want, GIMP or whatever, and I make a grid. So you can see behind all of my little icons, well first of all each icon is 50 pixels. And you can see that they each take up a 50 by 50 pixel frame inside of my sprite sheet. And then my canvas size is 200 by 150. 200 pixels this way, 150 pixels this way. Now your sprite sheet image could be any size. The canvas could be any size and these images could be anywhere on the sprite sheet. They don't have to be in a perfect grid like mine are. You can have them in a very disorganized way, but still you can access them by the pixel using the background position property. So all I do is I go in my graphics editor and let me show you what this is. Let me bring the opacity up and then I'll put a border on these little boxes. All I do at first is I go through and I put a, a bunch of little 50 by 50 pixel boxes in there and that gives me my grid. 
and I put as many as I need for as many graphics that I want. And then I make sure they have no edge, and then I bring the opacity on them, or the transparency, all the way down to zero. That way you can't see them. But while I'm setting up my graphics and putting my little graphics into place in my graphics editor, I have them showing, and I show a little border on there, so I know exactly where to put all of my graphics within the frames. And that's just an approach that I like to use. So you'll see all kind of sprite sheets for all kind of different purposes when it comes to computer science. All right, so just get those last two buttons in place and that'll get you feeling your way around with the background position property. Okay, now I'll quickly discuss what I feel are the key benefits for using a sprite sheets for your web design skins or whatever, or for your interactive elements in your documents. Now the first and the most important thing I think is that especially when it comes to web applications or websites is that all of the graphics that might be hover state or active state or click state or any state they're all going to be preloaded graphics so you don't have to worry about preloading a whole bunch of little icon files for your different states. Once your sprite sheet is called into play to load these gray graphics by default on state. I mean, not on state. I don't know why I said that. When these graphics are loaded to the page by default, before anybody even interacts with them, your whole sprite sheet is going to be preloaded. That means all these colored states for the graphics are going to be preloaded in the document. That way, right directly when the user's mouse goes over, that colored image is ready. It doesn't, it, it won't disappear for a moment. The element won't disappear for a moment while a new image is downloaded into the browser cache. Does that make sense? The sprite sheet is fully loaded. All graphics on it are fully loaded from the get-go when the document loads by default. Because you're using a portion of this sprite sheet to show these graphics by default before anybody even interacts with them, that means the whole sprite sheet has to load into the document by default. So I think that is the primary key benefit. Now another key benefit is that, let's say you wanted to just hand this sprite sheet off to a designer so they can change it to different type of, of graphics for those icons. It would be a whole lot easier just to give the designer or some other new developer who's taking over the project the whole sprite sheet and if they understand sprite work, they can simply open the sprite sheet in their graphics editor and go about changing all the frames or all the cells, all the graphics in the cells. So it organizes all your graphics into one spot when it comes time for editing those graphics or changing them. And another benefit is that you don't have a thousand little icon files or little images on your server in your images folder you'll just have maybe a couple of sprite sheets and I think it's smart to group your sprite sheets you might not want to put all of your graphics for your software on a single sprite sheet unless your software only has a minimal amount of graphics but if you have a large amount of graphics for your software or your website I wouldn't put all of the graphics on one sprite sheet I would group them uh, into related sprite sheets you know what I mean like this one is called icons.png because it holds all icons now if I had another one that was for you know some other interface to hold a whole like a, a WYSIWYG editor like a rich text editor that had a bold uh, and it needed things like an underline symbol and horizontal rule symbol you know I could put all of those states for all of those little graphics on one sprite sheet called richtexteditor.png or rte.png you know what I'm saying so you might want to take all of your graphics and group them into sprite sheets according to you know the interface that they're used for but you can literally load up the entire software's graphics onto one sprite sheet but just keep in mind that that sprite sheet will take a little bit longer to load than a smaller sprite sheet would so initially by default all of your graphics will be loaded into your software but it might just take a tiny smidge longer to load all the graphics in or the whole sheet okay that's all the talking I feel like doing and you guys are probably falling asleep by now wake up